Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. Here in Ulda, in front of Radovan, where we continue our Gunbreaker. The walls that surround this city remind me of my homeland. We built it as a fortress to keep out invaders. Now that it's made much difference in the end. Oh, not this again. Perhaps you could lighten the mood by sharing our recent bit of good news. Ah, yes. It looks like we found our next client. Nothing's been decided, but a lady named Oriel is waiting for us near the Gate of Fall. We'll meet you there. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. You have a good bodyguards, right? We need your help. It's my husband. After he walked out, I thought I'd seen the last of him, but now... You've got to keep him away from us. Uh, I'm not sure we're qualified to settle domestic disputes. Radovan, this sounds serious. Hear her out, would you? Very well. My apologies. Please continue. His name is Ger Gerard. He won't leave us alone and he keeps jumping out to harass us when we are by ourselves. If we had to go outside the city's gates, I'm sure he'd follow us. When he does, I want you to scare him off. I doubt he'll show himself if he sees you have bodyguards, so we wait somewhere nearby. If the moment is right, we'll give him a fright he won't forget in a hurry. Yes, that ought to work. Tim and I will leave through this gate, so you should find the hiding place. It's time that bastard, excuse my language, learned his lesson. This husband of hers sounds like a nasty piece of work. We'd best be ready for trouble. Remember, we've got a boy to think about. I'd rather not cut down a man in front of his own son, but I will if I have to. You follow my lead. Get away from her. What? Who oh, bloody else are you? Friends of Oriel's. Now walk away while you still can. But I only want what's best for the boy. Your boy? You've got no right to call him that. He belongs to me. This is your final warning. Both of them again and you won't live to regret it. <laughs> That'll teach him. And you are wonderful, worth every gill. Thank you so much. It was our pleasure. This is not over. Although there wasn't much for you to do, your presence lent weight to my words. But most importantly, the client was satisfied with our work. Yes, she did seem rather pleased with herself. Listen, you two. There's no time to explain. We have to follow that woman. Elspeth, when Sophie gets one of her hunches, there's no stopping her. I knew she was up to something. Why would she bring Tim all the way out here? Salam to the Amalja? Is what I'm fearing? What are we supposed to do if it went like this? If you feed him up, he might be worth us something. One day. She's selling her own child. We gotta stop them. Wait, is that. Enough of this! Stay away from my son! Son, huh? <laughs> Should have kept out of his mate. Too late now. Got to help him. <laughs> Not now. So when it's up to you. Mm. Ah. Where'd she come from? 
Let's have one. You served us. How can I ever... Daddy! So when you let you down, I let everyone down. So we... What happened here? I knew from the moment I met Oriel, there was something not quite right about her. It wasn't until later I realized she's a somnus addict. Once it takes hold, it changes you. She was able to keep her addiction hidden from most, but not from me, and probably not from her family either. Yes, I've known for a while, but I had no idea she'd do something like this. Gods, if I hadn't started gambling, this would never have happened. My debt spiraled beyond control, and she went to get away from me, start a new life with our son. The shock of losing them made me realize I couldn't live that like that anymore, so I vowed to turn my life around, and I worked my fingers to the bone to repay the money I owed. But by the time I finally found the coach to track down Oriel, it was too late. She'd made new friends, the wrong sort of friends, and had to resort to God only knows what to make ends meet. It became too much to bear and Somnus was her only escape. Nothing else mattered to her, not even her own child. So you see, it wasn't only my life I'd ruined. I made her who she is today. That's why I don't have it in me to hate her. What will you do now? I plan to send her to front their front story. Uh, they can treat people like Oriel, although it costs more than most folk can afford. My f savings should cover it for a short while at least. We take it one day at a time and see how she responds to the treatment. I know she might never recover, but I can't give up on her. Obviously, she's in no fit state to look after Tim, so he'll be living with me. You could have been killed confronting those slavers. If you wind up dead, there'd be no one to look after the boy. From now on, you have to think before you act. I will, I swear it. Thank you all for everything you've done. That poor child. Sophie's quick thinking may have saved him on this occasion, but I fear his hardships are far from over. I, on the other hand, only succeeded in disgracing myself. Again. It's not your fault, Radovan. I think you owe Serenia an explanation, though. Yes, if we are to fight side by side, there's something you should know. Though I served as an Imperial conscript for a time, after I disobeyed a direct order, I was sentenced to solitary confinement for more than a decade. Wow. Wow. Like many of them inmates, I was forced to wear a matchstick collar. The wardens could use them to amidst administer a severe electric shock at any time they pleased. And pleased them it did. The paralysis could eventually wear off, but even now, years after removing the collar, my whole body was suddenly seized up. It is as though the pain never left me, and could reawaken at any moment. Thankfully my condition appears to have improved somewhat since leaving the Empire. Perhaps one day I will be free of it. But until then, there's no telling when it might strike. Why the one saved my bacon more times than I can count? It's not only fair that I do the same for him. We've been through thick and thin ever since the first time we met in that Galian Gull. 
I was evading execution along with the other captured members of the resistance, as well as various insurgents and undesirables. Among them were several Sonnus addicts. Even in Imperial jail, there are ways to get your hands on it. And I saw Ariel, I couldn't put my finger on it at first, but she had the same look in her eyes as those lost souls. Anyway, where was I? So, Radovan had been meaning to escape ever since he was first imprisoned and was secretly digging a tunnel a few ohms each night over the course of about ten years. The only thing was, it went the wrong way. When one night he suddenly burst through the wall. Why did you have to tell her that? You know I'm far from proud of my uh, miscalculation. Well, things worked out in the end, didn't they? The other inmates much made such a record when you came crashing in, they drew the attention of the wardens and all hell broke loose. In the confusion, Radwan and I forced our way past the guards and by some miracle we managed to avoid the searchlights. And finally we were free. Free to return to my wife and child. To my homeland or so I thought. While I'd been rotting away in a guardian cell, everything I knew, everything I loved had been taken from me. I should have been there, but I couldn't even... <sighs> Enough of this, we've spoken over long as it is. Well then, where to next? I think I've had my fill of Ulda. What say you we try our luck in Limsalaminsa? I'm sure a change of scenery will do us a world of good. Yes, I like the sound of that. Let's reconvene at the local adventurer's guild. Another sailor uniform, Sophie? So, what do you think? <laughs> a city founded by pirates? Now there's a terrible idea if I ever heard one. With all the cutthroats running rampant, I'm surprised there's anyone left. And what about the view? The sea breeze? There'll be plenty of time to enjoy ourselves once we've found more gill in our pockets. Serenia, we're still working from, for word from the guild. So perhaps you should find somewhere for a few practice swings in the meantime. We're pleased to hear that the Yellow Jackets have offered us an assignment. After taking more than we bargained for with our previous clients, we are hoping this one will turn out to be relatively straightforward. We haven't heard what it entails yet, but I'll bet it's something important. A man for, called Futak Yafutak has arranged to meet us in Bolvar Call. Let's go and see what he wants. Yeah, the lava fell. Thank you for coming on such no short notice. Time is of the essence, but I'll be brief. We want you to protect Guldswaid, who was until recently leader of the Flaming Mongrels. They were once a gang of raiders, but eventually settled in Missalominsa to extort and warp their way to a position of considerable influence in the criminal underworld. But all ended when Guldswaid turned himself in. No one saw it coming, not even the other Flaming Mongrels. He's due to give testimony in exchange for a reduced sentence. Not just about the crimes he committed himself, either. All the gangs he had the dealings with have ample reason to silence him before he spills his secrets. He's currently being held in the Morari Dry Docks. Your job is to see that he reaches Limsa in one piece. So he wants to act as bodyguards to a criminal? I don't like the sound of that. We'd be protecting the information that's in his head, which could be used to bring countless other lawbreakers to justice. It sounds like a worthwhile cause to me. It is, and before you ask why we're hiring outsiders, it's to avoid tension. If I pull too many yellow jackets from their posts, the gangs will figure out what's going on. Better to give the impression that it's business as usual while using professionals like you to escort him in secret. We still need to secure the route, so I'll go on ahead and see to the preparations. Come and find me at the dry docks when you're ready. Before we begin, we should find out more about this gold waste. While it's important to place our trust in the client, I don't want to repeat the mistake we made last time. Okay, 
Now, probably Frame Dogs is crazy because it's full of players here as usual. The rumors are true that Flaming Mumbles are involved in most of the money lending and extortion that goes on in the city. Gold Race was at the center of his rep, overseeing every aspect of their clandestine activities. Now that he's finally found the decency to give himself up, I imagine with his former associates, would rather he kept quiet concerning their dealings. Ah yes, everybody has heard of the Flaming Mongols. Their modus operandi is to offer loans, increase the interest to an extent that their mark has no hope of ever paying it back, and then force the poor soul to obey their every whim. I'm not at liberty to discuss an ongoing investigation. I can say, however, that many Yellow Jackets believe heartless curs like Gertzweitz deserve nothing less than death. He and his rogues have left only tragedy and despair in their wake. Mercy would be a waste. This Gertzweitz has garnered quite a reputation for himself. It seems Futak yet Futak was telling the truth. Do you hear anything useful? Yes, it's just as Futak we had Futak said. Goodway certainly has a lot of enemies on both sides of the law. Wait one, it's not too late to refuse. Think about what you're doing. Trust me, I have. Now let's say no more on the matter. We have a job to do. He'll be in fetters, but I can still keep an eye on him. If he tries to escape, I'll make him regret it. We can't let anyone get between us and Gilt Vates. If he dies, it was all for naught. All set? Good. Then it's time to bring out the prisoner. Present Guild Base, Scorch of Limsa Lominsa. His life is in your hands now, got him well. Thank you kindly. Hmm, are you sure you got the right man? Quite sure. Now listen carefully, this is important. We've scouted the road ahead and we spotted a group of unsavory figures lying in wait. The plan is to put them down and rush past before anyone realizes what's happened. Well, if that's how you preferred us to handle it, then very well. But we need someone to take the lead to cut through the ambush. I choose you for that war, Serenia. Show me how far you've come as a gunbreaker. The rest of us will stay close to Ghost Wright and fend off any that try to flank us. Futak, I give you my word that we'll get him to Limsa. Even if it, I have to carry him there. We're depending on you, Serenia. Once you clear the path, we'll be right behind you. We'll group at Oshon's embrace and assess the situation before moving on. Think you can stop us?
so far so simple. A pretty poor attempt at an ambush. Without the element of surprise, there are nothing. Yes, very impressive. And I'll save my thanks until we reach Limsa, if you don't mind. I bring bad news, I'm afraid. Those men went here to ambush you with their only lookouts. The bulk of the enemy force lies ahead. We take the prisoner to a safe hiding place until those rogues have been dealt with. What? Why wasn't I informed sooner? We only just received the information ourselves. I'm to take the prisoner into custody while you are to return to your post until further notice. As for the hirelings, their services are no longer required. Now hold on a moment. Look, if you got a problem, take it up with Commodore Rayner. Bear his orders, not mine. Alright, you make your point. Well, that's that, I suppose. Nevertheless, I see that you receive a full amount as agreed. It was a pleasure working with you. Something is not right here. I say we follow them. Hmm, something about this doesn't add up. Surely it would make more sense for Futak to go with them. Besides, our agreement was to see good raids to Limsa, and that's exactly what I intend to do. You two come with me. It's like the shoes on the other foot this time, so I can hardly refuse. Come on, before he does something we'll regret. Yeah, we heard there were a lot of... Even among the Yellow Jackets, there were a lot peop of people who think he deserves death. I suspect this was one of those. She took him inside. If my guess is correct, there's no time to waste. Nothing for it but follow him, I suppose. Stop this at once. Stay out of its cells, what my friend said because of this filth. He got no right to live, so why would you protect him? Because I gave my word. Though he may be beyond redemption, he acts not for his own sake, but for the good of others. His testimony will make Lim Salominsa a safer place. Now lower your axe. Take the trophy you got here when you did. It didn't take long for us to find out it was all a ruse, but by then she's already bought enough time to carry out her plan. Luckily for us, the three of you went so easily duped. Of course, she's not the only yellow jacket to bear a brudge against good race, but I never thought any of us would go to such lengths. Ah, fine bloody mess this is. While we may have been waylaid somewhat, our orders to escort Guildrace still stand. Before we go, I want to thank you for all you've done. To this, I ain't got long to live. Even if I can escape having my head lopped off, the sickness will get me sure enough. You could have lived out your days as one of the leading figures of the underworld. Rich and powerful. What made you turn yourself in? Since before I can remember, I've been cheating and killing to put food in my belly and gear in my pocket. And I was good at it too. Worked me way to the top. But the top of what? Bunch of liars, swindlers and murderers. And when I found out I only have a few moons left, I realized. Limits is the way it is because of people like me. It ain't gotta be that way though. Not if I say my piece. In that case, we'd best get you to Limsa. Post haste. Aye, before I kick the bucket, lead the way. You 
done right by me. For that, I thank you. I'm glad our part's over, but I wonder what will happen to Gold Race. Not the most direct route, but we got here in the end. All that remains is for Gold Race to give his testimony. On behalf of the Yellow Jackets, I offer my thanks. You kept your words, so now it's my turn. Fare you well. Every city has its problems, this one more than most. It's high time we moved on. Seeing as we've been to Alamigo, Gridania, Ulda, and Nimsaluminsa, that leaves Ishgard. Uh, I don't exactly thrive in cold climates, though. Just get yourself a decent overcoat and you'll be fine. Well then, let's be off. Oh, why would anyone want to live here? Even with these thick clothes, I'm frozen to the bone. I'll admit it's a fair bit colder than I was expecting. Not that there's anything to be concerned about. That's easy for you to say. You'll soon get used to it, I'm sure. Anyway, Serenia, it seems that instead of offering work they have at an adventurer's guild, Ishgard's Temple Knights issue levis. Although there do not appear to be any clients in need of protection, it's only a matter of time before something comes our way. Until then, be sure not to let your skills or your gunblade grow rusty. Okay. And with that, I end this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, when we play more Final Fantasy XIV, I am Ace, and don't get lost. <laughs>